My Little Pirates, Sylvie's Adventures in Equestria, Next Chapter, Recovery. Twilight looked down at the smaller form of Celestia, that is soon with a nervous frown. Yes, Twilight. The same elements that redeemed Luna and healed her have done something wrong with Celestia. My God, the you and Celestia hates tea is smarter than this. The white alicorn looked like she was sleeping. Her mane pulsated like it had little of its own heartbeat, but did constantly flow like it normally did. Starlight felt a hoof on her shoulder to see that Weiss was at her side. Don't worry, Twilight. Princess Luna was fine after we used the elements on her. Princess Celestia probably does need some rust. I think we all do, Vast asked. Everybody turned to see that she was covered in multiple birds and smoking. Her form since she started to fall. Right before she lose the consciousness, she crashed to the ground and said, Wake me for the party! Rainbow Dash! Her friend screamed. They rushed over, dwelling in rarity already performing healing spells are. She's stable, Starlight said, her aura immaculating with Weiss's. But those are bad buns, Weiss replied. Cadence, get some rooms ready at Carolot Hospital, Armor croaked. Starlight's eyes, followed by her friends, fell on him. He wasn't doing much better than Das, and one of his legs dragged against the ground. Wait, 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 wait. When they used the elements on Luna, Rarity got her horn fixed. Now they don't fix the birds? My fick, you are fickle, are you? Despite his best efforts, my new signs of pain showed on his face. A few eye twisters and clenched teeth were most noble. He got closer to Das and lit up his horn. He flashed a sympathetic look to Starlight. <laughs> it looked the same the day I got my key mark, and they got the hay being out of me. It started to start glowing, and his magic faded away from lights and starlights. Das's cut was almost back to normal now, save for a few of the larger burns, which were now smaller. There. She should be good in a few hours. It's the least I could do. He brought his attention over to Cadence. Honey, I'm stepping out for a bit. Armor class with an unceremonious thud. Shiny! Cadence rushed to him, her horn alight with healing magic, instantly wrapped around him. Hey, our friend is KL2! T-Star floated down her eyes. It's difficult! Starlight tried over and gave Cadence a reassuring pack on the back. He is. That's why we love him. Cadence feeling her spell, leaving armor unconscious, but not horribly as injured. She raised the hoof and wiped some of the tears from her face. You got me there. What am I going to do with him? Well, remember that time he got cast? And we drew. A devious smile filled Kansas' face. And here I thought you had become a complete bookworm. Stunned apples echoed back and forth between Kansas and Twilight. In her mind, images of the two playing pranks came into conflict, with images of Twilight quietly playing books. She shook her head to clear the paradox away. Oh, um, don't mind later up, but it looks like we're missing two bonus. Oh my gosh. Starlight called out in a large voice, Where are Princess Luna and Luffy? Eek! Nora screamed from nearby but out of sight. The rest of the party rushed over to see what had disturbed her. Pinky, what did the question is? Weiss gasped when she saw that what Nora had screamed about. Standing a little below them was Princess Luna. However, she was much smaller, and her mane was very light blue and unmoving. She essentially looked the same as when the elements first cleansed her. On her back rested a small tan coat with a familiar straw hat on its flank and attached to his neck. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Nora flailed her legs around wildly. It looked at her to her friends. That big me turned Princess Luna and Luffy into a fellow cult! Now we'll need to go on a quest to find the ancient fellow and the ancient and save them! Starlight rested uh, there as the face of Nora. That's the plot of a Dairy Do novel. What's a pretty positive I have read is much better than this. Her eyes went nervously over to Luffy and Luna. Princess, what happened? Masako Soxton. Luna huffed, breathing a little back in. Among the many ways my sister and I are unique is that our magic is represented in our physical forms. When we respond to much energy, her eyes fell over to Celestia's form. Or we are stripped away, this is the result. Oh, I see you do love it when season four contradicts this. Liz looked, shifted to look back at Luffy, who was rubbing his stomach. 
Didn't know about Straw Hat, though. Oh, I just get small after I become giant. Living nice and lightly replied. I'll be back to normal in a minute or two. Uh, that should have happened a lot sooner. What? Starlight like Japan. Actually, you know what? I don't want to know. Studying you would be worse than analyzing Nora. I'm just glad you're both safe. Sis, you look absolutely adorable like that. Wise cute. I haven't seen anything that cute since we just said Spikey Wikey. What a bust up a little. Oh, uh, um, yes. I suppose without us looking at you. First Dr. Will whisper that even first have a hard time hearing. Cute. So, now that we kicked the jerk princess's butt, can I eat something? I haven't had breakfast. I had a fight without having breakfast. Luffy flailed his hose around in a childlike fashion, only for one to pop back down to his original size. The rest of his body followed. It caused the smaller one to fall. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you two look like you just lost a game of Twister. Nora giggled. Luna went from her normal blue colors to bright red. She pushed Luffy off of a burst of magic and dusted herself off. Well, 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 we, we should probably get Sister and the others back some medical attention. I get to store house for breakfast. I ain't on it. Pinky jumped over him and handed Luffy a cupcake, which he instantly inhaled. Uh, she noticed her friends give her odd looks. What? You always eat cupcakes? Stud Applejack and Sister had took a little. <laughs> Where's Rainbow Dias? You are so random. Everything was burning around Celestia. Carolot Castle had collapsed and was just a collection of rubble now. Houses were mostly ash now, and those that weren't were completely engulfed in fire. But what made Celestia's heart stop were the ponies. All around her were her subjects, burnt and blackened shells of the sins as they had been. Even in their state, Celestia could make out the contorted agony on their faces. She reached forward to cradle the body of a young colt, but it crumbled to ashes in her legs. No, she stopped. How could I allow this? Because you are weak. Suddenly so pushed Celestia through the carnage. Hundreds of bodies were strewn around her. Each causing more tears to fall down her face. Stop it. No. A pony slammed to the ground at Celestia's hooves. Her blue coat had been made to ash and her mane had been burnt away. Celestia still recognized Luna's deep blue eyes. Why, sister? Why couldn't you stop it? Before Luna, Celestia could reply, Luna crumbled to dust and blew to the wind. Celestia bent down and cried more, pounding what was left of Luna to the crown. No! I only wanted to protect her! And you failed. Celestia looked up to see a monster was in front of her. The bearers of the elements of harmony were scattered around it. It held Twilight's neck in one hand and coldly looked at Celestia. Its straw hat floated with the flames around it. You... Were we... No! Celestia quivered like a small filly. And she could have seen herself, that's exactly what she was. A child staring down at Behemoth. I've done everything to protect my sisters. And it was useless, the monster replied. It flung Twilight and Celestia, but the unicorn exploded to dust before hitting her. You thought beasts of fancy for the answers. But those were just fancy walls to hide behind. Well, they came back. Okay, besides that. This card was beaten. Okay, besides that. This card was beaten again. Okay, besides that. 600 years of peace. Shut up. The monster tried over, losing its human size, and adopting that of a tall white pony with a flaming mane and tail. Celestia backed away, but a field of magic picked her up and forced her to look into the monster's abysmal eyes. You should have taken action. You should have listened to me. I will cut your ties and leave only righteous hatred. The monster opened its mouth and prepared to devour Celestia. Celestia screamed. However, just as the monsters were about to close on her, a light grew above them. Despite your fear, it caused Celestia's eyes to twinkle a little. She pushed with all her might and freed herself from the monster's gullet. Now the monster seemed much smaller in size, while Celestia was growing back to her regular height. You said friendship isn't the answer? Celestia tried at the monster, which continued to streak down in the rainbow light. All around on the fire side down. Friendship is the answer. Immense hatred scares the unites the scared. It gives the weak strength. Celestia focused on the monster, now a little more than a filly herself. I'm not weak. You are. For a moment, the monster said nothing. This glared at Celestia. For now, Celestia. For now. Don't think you've won. This is just a stalemate. Besides, what will you do when the war comes to you? You'll be alone again. 
Celestia patiently shook her head back and forth. I won't be. When I go, it won't be just to protect my senses like before. Seven forms coalesced around her to form Luna, Twilight, and the other bearers. They will be on my side. The monster became by a speck. It floated over a breast Celestia's flowing mane. Whisper carried upon the wind. Don't forget. Friendship only makes the scars stop hurting. And heal some. Shut up. I mean, look. Will you stop using actual examples? No. Lizzie had a rainbow light in the sky. It was overtaken by its colors. Celestia slowly opened her eyes. She recognized that she was on her bed in her room. However, before she could take it in her room, she felt pleasure on the torso. Like the stars! Luna cried. Luna, I... A tough of Celestia's pink mane fell in front of her face. Oh. Dizzy realized Starlight and her friends were looking at her. Starlight had a few tears in her eyes. Oh. Princess Celestia! Starlight quivered. I'm glad you're safe. I... I should be the one saying that. Luna, please let go. There's much we must discuss. Yep! Luna replied. Sister, I know better than any point what it's like to be like that. You must understand what happened may have started with your own fears, but what you did while persisting was not fully in control. That doesn't excuse either of our actions, Celestia retorted. I would be a hypocrite to hide behind that excuse when I cautioned you against it. She turned over to Starlight, my faithful student. Once more, you have prevailed against the odds to save the kingdom, despite the turmoil I have caused you. We wouldn't have been able to do it without Princess Luna and Luffy, responded to Starlight. Where is Starhead anyway? Celestia asked. He deserves my apology more than anyone else. Um, well... Starlight lit up her horn. In front of him, four immersed Luffy. He was sound asleep and had a slightly distended stomach. He's... Nora, how did she put... Food coma! Nora replied in an uncharacteristically scientific tone. I haven't seen one like this at Devil Bucket season four years ago. A stunned Applejack whistled at the midst of the event. Say, we must have slid for a whole day straight. I'll hide hey, here for a week after that. Anyway, Starlight continued, after last time, perhaps explanations would be best left to us. Very well, Celestia replied. First, let me apologize once more for the harm I have done to all of you. Second, you deserve to just know how this nightmare came to be. For centuries now, my helplessness over Luna's basement has slowly eaten away at me. When I became Warlord, that helplessness and fear mixed with hatred and infested in me. Celestia took a deep breath. I thought when Luna returned, things would get better. I still had to listen to the world government, but my services were not called upon except on one occasion. When was that? asked Starlight. The execution of the Pirate King. Luffy's ears shot up and eyes flared open. Did... So... Someone that's a gold roger? Oh, you're awake. Celestia commented. She bowed her head deeply. Straw Hat, I have committed foul and terrible acts for you. Know that you have my eternal debt for not only saving my sister, but stopping my rampage. Can I get meat? Luffy replied. Oh, Celestia frowned. Understand, in Equestria, cows are sentient creatures. Slaying one for our nourishment would be practically equivalent to cannibalism. However, Celestia's horn lightly glowed, and a plate with a large steak appeared out of nowhere. Will this work? Luffy lunged at the food and bit off a chunk of it. With a mouthful, he said, Wait, you're not part! It switched the meat around his mouth and slowly swallowed. This isn't real meat, is it? Celestia's mouth dropped a little. That is a slight, highly fancy static spell. Unless you did a magical analysis, you shouldn't be able to tell the difference. I just know when meat isn't meat. Still tasty, though. It would have been funnier if uh, Luffy didn't recognize the difference. One bite later, the rest of the meat was gone. So you were saying about the Pirate King? Yes, that. Celestia took in and breathed in and continued her tale. That day, all seven of Warlords gathered. It was more show than anything else. The world government did it just for publicity. The Pirate King was an odd character, to say the least. I don't know what inspired him to do it, but he... Turned himself in, Luffy finished. Celestia's eyes widened a little. How do you know that? No one outside of the government and Roger's cr- You met Rally, didn't you? Who? Starlight asked. A member of Roger's crew. I met him when I was contemplating Roger's execution. His stuff wasn't disturbing as it must have puzzling, 
Boozlin? Stunned Applejack pondered. I was a sample of a pants and boozlin. Was it a master or something? No, Celestia answered. It was public. But it brought up more questions than just himself turning him in. When he died, he proclaimed his treasure, and in his dying breath, and it dying with a smile on his face. Ooh, I love that part of the story, said Nora. Sad, but also really neat. He wasn't even scared of death. I know, right? Luffy said with a smile. Following his death, I was hastily making my way back to my ship when I was stopped by an odd man. Celestia continued. He simply took out a bit and gave it to me. What's so amazing about the bit? asked Weiss. Surely he didn't think you were a beggar of some kind. No, but the issue was that a majority of the world operates on a monetary system called a berry. Wouldn't he rot? asked Nora. No, Nora, Celestia explained. A berry is just like a bit, a solid coin made of metal. However, the point here is that he had a bit. There was only one way to attain one, and it would have been impossible. At least I thought. The gears clicked in Starlight's head. He was here, wasn't he? And completely undetected. I nearly incinerated Raleigh right there. However, he promised he'd taken nothing but the old bit and a few scraps of food. Later, rather, that he, Roger, and the rest of the crew only enjoyed Equestria and felt there was no place for their kind. Wow, so Sanks was here too, Luffy mused. I'm not aware who this Sanks is, but if he was part of Roger's crew, then I don't doubt him entering this land. Actually, the truth is, I have found Sanks is a daughter. Sunset, hi! Celestia's expression darkened. I quickly returned to a question after that, more shaken by his words and covered it. Roger's death didn't help either. I suddenly cursed him for inspiring more adventurers to the sea. It just meant troubles for me. After that, Celestia or Equestria was hardly isolated from the world. Celestia focused on Starlight again. I helped raise you to discover the magic of friendship which helped curb my own disgust. It freed Luna when I could not, and things were truly looking bright. Celestia frowned and looked to the blankets. Then Discord came back. With Luna, I had chosen not to fight her. But with Discord, I would have gone to the dying breath to defeat him. But you know how that went. Only the elements can stop him, Starlight whispered. Yeah, I still don't know how he broke free. It really, really, really makes no sense. Not at all. Absolutely sucks. Zero. Nada. It died. No wonder everybody quit. Quit and has been working on Fall Starfleet. I'm this close. I'm this close to working on Fall Starfleet. If I didn't have a little sister to work with, yes. See him run amok in hurting ponies. Hurting you and your friends. It made me feel so weak. Even though I should know that only the elements could have beaten Discord. I'm not seeing the problem here. I'm angry. I want power to defend my little ponies. Then when the Chainsley attack happened. I think I've already said my piece about this. But if you want, want to know more. You can go see my extended article at www dot this is to be easy enough to explain dot com Celestia sighed deeply to insult injury my warlord duties were being called upon more they were just briefings but I detested them I was exposed to the worst crimes of humanity rebellions which Luna did wars the founding of the three bears cover ups which you did and annihilations. Okay, I'm going to give you that one. <laughs> Sister, question. What's the difference about my rebellion and your and the rebellions you saw humanity do? Oh, well, uh, yeah. And what's the difference between the wars over there versus the three tribes wanting to kill each other in their throats? Well, you see, and what's the difference between their cover-ups and your cover-ups? Oh, well, you see, that the problem is... And, okay, I'll forgive you for the United Nations. Oh, thank God you don't know about the Paris price. So, yeah! What's the difference? Did it have broke when a warlord was defeated by a certain pirate with a straw hat? Oh! You're talking about when I kicked Crocodile's butt. Needless to say, you caused a mess for the government. So, as he said, was me, file. All I saw, back then, all I saw was the sword and peril Equestria. Again, 
the monsters, the gods, the demons, Severus is downstairs. What is the hay here? More with it's a chaos because of a cause. No offense. Love you, Spellbecker. Eh, far be a pirate. However, while your actions caused significant distress to the government, they were nothing compared to the great storm that was about to come. Celestia lit up her horn, and a stone flew out of a nearby wall, revealing a small vault, which also opened with Celestia's magic. Out of it flew a small scroll. This is the gravest threat Equestria has ever known. What? What is it? Tamaki quivered from behind Weiss. War, Celestia proudly answered. The room grew deathly silent. But I thought we were safe as long as you complied, Starlight gasped. This is not war with Equestria replied Celestia. No, this is a war that could shift the balance of the whole world. You see, in its ignorance, the world government has decided to execute a commander of an old and powerful pirate crew. Their leader is a monster, a relic of ages past that has survived to become one of the most powerful forces on the seas. The hearing of his power gave me cause of alarm. This man, this legend, is known as Whitebeard. Effin Woot. A silver ran through all the ponies in the room as if the name itself carried weight. Applejack managed to get a few out a few words. I'm not one for fancy government stuff, but why would you want to make a thing all that angry? They assert their power. Celestia shook her head back and forth. Like me, they feel strength is the only answer. Since when have I ever felt that strength was the only answer? By executing a member of the Whitebeard Pirates, they think it will show off their authority. They even know Whitebeard will come and save him, and I must fight him. You can't! Starlight yelled, starting the rest of the ponies. Princess, if you can't go, if you go, or get hurt, or turn back into a monster again, I must. Celestia replied with a regal tone. If I don't, then my status as a warlord is void, and the question will be in shambles. Even on the off chance Whitebeard did win, that might even be worse. Then this island will lose its protection. It's a new no-win scenario, and it caused me much turmoil. In fact, combined with my century of worry, it was enough to release Discord again. Really? My worry... ...caused Discord to be released. R really? D just really? Nothing else! Throughout the 600 years... I've had my sister gone away. It was my worry, combined with the threat of war, that released Discord. <laughs> Is it too late to back off? Please, sister, don't leave. A snake, Celeste, would a curse. When she saw the bike stairs every point else was giving her. Twilight Spock of Timmy, when you fought Discord, did he come to contact with you? No, but... He made every pony else act strange and horrible. Starlight shivered to memory. He made me think every pony was laughing at me, said Nora. I mind my feeling that the only way to keep up every pony together was to lie, snorted Stud Applejack. He made me think of... Why scratched her eyes in frustration? Rock was more important than my friends. He just touched my hand, Tamaki said. Yeah, basically flipped everybody's osmosis into opposites. He played mind games. Duh. It's his most vile magic. He plays mind games. Turns you around. It brings out the worst in a pony and gives their negative emotions dominance. For normal ponies, at least. Don't know why we're different. I mean, we have minds, and we're ponies like every pony else. Don't know why we're so special, but... Really doesn't make any sense here. Unlike any of the points, even with a fate, there's always a whisk of feet out. It's easier to deal with once you've been cleansed, but the corruption is always there, like a whisper in the back of your mind. So as you pushed yourself and revealed more of her smaller form, the physical toll of being cleansed is also heavy on us. It took Luna six months to recover from her ordeal. It'll be sore for me, but I need rest. But, but what about the war? Tabaki asked nervously. That execution is not for a fortnight. That will give me time to heal. Celestia looked out the window and noticed the smoking ruins of Luna's room and helped her build. I have a question. 
said Luffy, his voice not so dumping anymore. He said a commander for Whitebeard's crew was going to be executed. Who is it? A pirate known as a Portugus D. Ace. Louis' eyes turned to Pitpricks. He's my brother. Nani? Everybody yells in the room screamed. Celestia rested a hoof on her head. What sort of family do you have? It would have been enough for you to cause the world government trouble on your own, but now your brother's the center of the war! Ugh, such coincidences are far few in this world. We gotta stop him! Luffy yelled. I won't let them kill Ace! This is the world government in full force straw hat. Your escape in this lobby will be nothing compared to this. Even now, Ace is... There is one way. Tell me! Ace is being held as our Tartarus right now, explained Celestia. I can get us in there and stay as a jailbreak. jailbreak. Oh, there's gonna be a jailbreak. Oh, there's gonna be a jailbreak. You do that? Luffy nervously asked. It's the least I could do. Celestia saw my answer. Sister, Luffy spoke up. Let me go instead. What you told me about Tartarus is true. The risk is too high. You know, I just figured. What? Twilight brought Severus to... Tartarus, right? Yes. How come she didn't see any of this? Oh, hey, I'm a little tumbleweed, jumping through your silence. I'm just a little tumbleweed, and I have no malice. Luna, Celestia calmly replied, You're not taking her monsters into account. Besides, I spared you the worst news about the Tartarus. It made it seem like a storybook dungeon. Her eyes flicked her over to Luffy. Straw Hat is a strong individual with no true ties to Equestria. His interference would nullify my agreement. Given his involvement in his lobby, it wouldn't be hard to assume he stuck into Tartarus using the knowledge he gained from there. Something, something I wish on anyone. But this may be the only way to avoid war and save countless lives. I understand that. But, Luna's eyes went over to Luffy. He'd be safe, right? As safe as I can keep him for you. Celestia replied, a small smile across her face. Not saying this lie! Me the hell! Come. 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 We move on. So, Luffy. You haven't had proper hockey training, have you? Um, how do we get into talking about sports? Asked Nora. Not hockey, Pinky. Celestia Crawford. Hockey. It is a force a few creatures can use. In fact, you use it quite often. I don't make my voice super loud, replied Pinky. But, as my faithful student has told me, you can predict certain actions. Silly, that's my Pinky sense. Not hockey or whatever, Nora giggled. It's a variant of hockey, said Celestia. If Polly's knew how to fully train hockey, I fear some would use it for ill deeds. Whoop, 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 whoop. Then what was all that BS talking about the worst of humanity? That, if fighting natural users of it is incredibly rare. No, 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 no. You just talked about, you just spent a few minutes talk, giving a few examples of the worst of humanity. You have spent this entire arc talking about how humanity is wrong. Now, you are saying that you fear that teaching your ponies, which you are saying is above that, hockey would be using for ill deeds. Make up your freaking mind! See, this is why it makes no sense for Celestia to be xenophobic. Because then she would have to dismiss what she knows of other ponies in their culture. You are just putting in this for the sake of conflict when there doesn't need to be. Celestia's eyes fell over the pony. That's why I'm impressed that some of you can manifest the three different forms of it. Well, who are you? Asked that apple tech. I mine. I don't think I've ever done anything to those strands. Except run a form at a young age. Even with ass assistance, that causes massive stamina. Explain Celestia. Her eyes passed over to Weiss and Starlight. 
Incredible levels of magic from a young age. And unique spells to find gems are not just rare gifts. Oh, kitty mock. They're natural ones. However, I think the two most profound examples of hockey users are our two Pegasi friends. Me? Sh Shuck to Maki. Yes. Make no mistake, Rainbow Jazz's ability to maintain high speeds is incredible. But her performance of a Sonic Rain Boom would be impossible without a hockey augmentation. Pegasi and Wings would normally snap at the pressure of Rainbow Dash and stare herself. You, however, have even a greater skill. I... I... what? Fires... Tamaki stumbled. At a gala, you probably didn't notice it, but I did. You cost quite a few points to pass out. Yes, but shouldn't it also caused a few animals to fall down or obey or paralyze? I... oh. Tamaki stumbled her hose around awkwardly. Is fine. However, from what I've learned of Starlight, you've done a similar thing before. How else could such a gentle mare keep so many rowdy animals in line? Flash Tamaki, you not only have hockey, but you also have a professed user of the king's hockey. Fluttershy? All her friends turned to her. Fluttershy just sunk into herself. Don't worry, it's not dangerous. Especially once you've mastered it. Celestia explained, even Luna slips up here and there. Then again, her hockey practically pours out of her. Then there's Strawhead, who is asleep. Indeed, you literally fall asleep, and that's a bit slumbering since Celestia started mentioning hockey. I should have known that would happen.